in Nigeria, the dry season usually starts from the month of March to April every year. However, this year, there have been an extreme hot and humid weather nationwide, even in coastal areas such as Lagos. Hitting the streets, residents of Lagos complain about the unbearable heat. There's no, any, there's, even though if you have fans, nothing will work for your house. I said, use hand fan, they find yourself, come outside. Sometimes we spend night for outside to debris because of the heat. Good night and morning, afternoon, morning, the, the hot, the weather is too, it's too high. Maybe the, this is the end of the life, so I don't know. We are feeling the hot weather, but there is nothing we can do with it. Eh? Because Nepa no bring light. So that is why the, uh, we cannot sleep well in the night in the house. We don't have choice because every pleasant day we buy petrol so that we can sleep better. Because if you can't see fan, the heat is too much. See on my neck like this for it to It's because we have to buy the petrol and we want it for the heat. To the second day, so I, I'm not okay. Medical and climate change experts warn against the dangers to human and natural resources. Dr. Tsunyi Meba Wondu, a public health expert for over three decades, speaks about the major risk factors of heat and preventive measures to take during this period. The purpose of sweating is to provide a cooling system because once you sweat and the, and the water evaporates, it cools your body. That is the purpose of the sweat. So now you have to sweat excessively. When you sweat excessively, you lose nutrients, you lose electrolytes, you lose water. So now, if the water is not, if it's not replaced, you become dehydrated. I mean, that what it means is that the water in your body then falls down below certain level, which becomes a problem for the body. This can have effect on the cardiovascular system, your, your, the pumping of your heart. It has effect on the kidney function, and even your mood and emotion. These are, and then, of course, with the heat, you are prone to rashes, okay, because, you know, the heat rash and infection thereof can be an additional problem. So, you also observe that people that experience heat, they cannot actually do work as they ought to do it. They, are, they have labile uh, mood. Their mood just swing anyhow. They get angry easily and they, can, they are prone to rash decisions, you know. So, apart from the, the thing having effect on the body, it has effect on the productivity of the person and even the productivity of the country or the city as a whole. If you're not an outdoor worker, stay under shade, okay? Uh, trees, houses, bus stops, in your, you know, that's where you can stay. Always take sufficient fluid, okay, along. Philip Jabo is a climate change expert. He calls on the government to take action against gas emission, bush burning, car exhaustion, and other human activities that pollute the earth. If we move away from those things, start looking at, uh, like I said earlier, the mass transit trails, the trains that will take people a long distance, like the government is doing, but we don't see too much commitment, like Lagos State is trying to do, but it's neither here nor there. If we have that nationally, so that I don't need to drive my car every morning or evening, and then I have to enter the train or the metro. Talking about the power grid collapse, the collapse of Niger's electricity grid actually occurred twice on Friday and Saturday last week, and despite concerted efforts to stabilize power system. The federal government report seen in Abuja on Monday showed that data in that report, which was obtained from the Federal Ministry of Power, showed the quantum of electricity on the grid crashed from 3,000 megawatts on Friday to as low as 10,000 megawatts, also, uh, or 10 megawatts. Also, another collapse of the national grid occurred on Saturday, April the 9th, uh, 2022, as the nation's power system collapsed to 33 megawatts after it had earlier posted a peak generation of 3,281.50 megawatts the same day. The report, however, indicated that power generation on the grid moved on Sunday, uh, that's April the 10th. Uh, you have the federal government also saying that the Nigerian Regulatory Commission and the system operator were investigating the causes of the recurrent power grid collapse that had repeatedly led to widespread uh, blackout across the country. We have George Etome, who is a power expert, joining the conversation this morning. George Etome, it's good to have you join us. Yes, I can, I can hear you. I hope you can hear me too. 
Well, many thanks for being part of the show. We appreciate it. So let's talk about this collapse of the national grid. And usually every time we hear that the national grid collapsed, and that's why Nigerians are in gross darkness, what exactly uh, really happens? Is this that do you have the uh, power generating infrastructure collapsing or the transmission infrastructure collapsing? And why do we have this constant collapse? Usually, when you talk about the, the grid, the national grid, you're actually referring to the transmission system. And as you are aware, there are three members, critical members in the value chain, the generation, transmission, and distribution. The grid is the network of transmission lines through which when power is generated, it is then transported, as it were, to the uh, distribution companies for onward supply to the various uh, consumers. So when the grid will collapse for a number of reasons, um, usually it is when it either has um, too much uh, uh, generation on it or too little generation. Uh, and this, this is why at any time it needs to be balanced. Now the grid capacity uh, like we all understand it, is roughly in the neighborhood of four to 5,000 megawatts. In other words, if, it's, if generating companies generate more than 5,000 megawatts, the grid will strain to, to get that to the discos. Or if it then goes below a very critical level, it will also strain. So it requires a delicate balance for that um, system to be maintained so that there's a steady flow. Now, for the generating companies themselves, they rely, uh, we have two major sources of um, power in Nigeria, the hydro and the thermal plants. The thermal plants, which is about 80% of our power needs, their feedstock is gas. And I'm sure you're familiar with the story that there's a shortage of gas, gas pipelines have been blown up, um, whenever those things occur, it compromises the ability of the generating companies to get the fuel that supplies, enables them to turn their turbines and then in turn generate power for the grid. When that happens, the grid will be unable to get enough critical power to transport and then to protect itself, it has to shut down. This is why you hear about a total collapse. That means the grid, the grid has essentially been shut down. Now, uh, at this particular time, I heard your report before now, it's very hot. Um, that's affecting the hydro. The hydro complement, like I said, is about 20%. And that 20% itself, a part of it has been lost because of the dry weather, uh, which has gone for so long um, this particular season. So the three hydro plants that we have, uh, all situated in Niger State, are struggling with low water le levels to enable them to uh, contribute the much they used to do to the grid. So a combination of low supply from the hydro system and gas problems compromising um, GENCOs uh, is largely responsible for the state's of the grid uh, uh, that, like we have now. And then there's a third factor. For some reason, uh, I can't really find them at this point. Uh, most of the generating plants are doing their turnaround maintenance. You know, you need to maintain these plants. It's just that uh, it's, it's a pity that this turnaround maintenance is coming around the same time as you're having problems with the gas, as you're having problems with hydro. So it's almost like um, um, having a situation in which uh, a conspiracy as it were to deny uh, Nigerians electricity. But having said that, the problem of yesterday, this issue of gas infrastructure being sabotaged has likely been fixed and supply has returned to the grid. But yesterday's collapse is attributed to a direct attack on the transmission facilities themselves between Idupani and Ekodepani. Now, that is very worrying because um, it's, it's actually an act of sabotage. Uh, because once you, you hit at the transmission lines themselves, 
it's it's a big problem because once you do that it affects once one section of the transmission line is unable to will power it causes problems for all the other sections and so you will have a grid collapse again to protect itself the grid will collapse you just think about uh, a highway uh, leading to um, a particular destination and then suddenly you have a gully the gully just enables those who are coming to supply the power to continue with the journey so this is what has just happened with regard to the last two collapses i think friday and saturday so that's a, 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 a real cause for concern now perhaps the question would be why do we have these frequent collapses on and what should be done about it now one major thing um, experts will tell you is that our grid does not have what they call a spinning reserve now a spinning reserve is that system that enables you have power on standby for those periods when you have this sort of collapse that we're talking about it kicks in it kicks in to give you short-term supply until you fix the main problem our grid does not have a spinning reserve and one of the biggest uh, recommendations going forward is that we should have spinning reserves to cater for those periods when you have problems and then you require a little bit of time to fix the problem so that way supply continues to go on and then you fix the problem the other issue that has been this issue of do we really need one grid because we have one massive grid covering the entire country. And the question is, can't you break up the grid? Must everybody be supplied power on this national grid system? The argument is, 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 is on as to whether or not we need one national grid. But the problem here is that the problem with the, the one mono grid, as we call it now, is that once something happens to one sector, it affects the entire sector. So there should be the ability as it were, to segment the grid so that you can create islands where power can be given to specific destinations when there's a problem in one other area. So that way you isolate supply areas so that transmission can continue uh, instead of this humongous grid that we have today. And right, finally, of course, um, following the reforms that brought in the privatization, the Jenkos have been privatized, so have the discos, but transmission is still held entirely by the government. All right, Mr. Natural, naturally, there will be the vagaries of uh, government control in any of these uh, assets. And so part of the experts are saying you must do something about it. The plan was to have concessioned it to top class management, but we don't see that happening. So I, I believe part of the human problems we face with government being involved in business is also one of the factors affecting uh, the transmission. All right, Mr. George, you tell me, you're, you have indeed uh, you know, encapsulated all of the issues and of course um, the, the preferable solutions all in one go. But we do really appreciate the time. But um, as it is right now, uh, what um, do we expect from this uh, Jenkos and Trancos? Uh, are Nigerians going to get better, you know, supply over time with these uh, frequent collapses that uh, we've been having? What's the way forward? What's the future, really? Well, the future is that we really don't have a choice but get better. That's honestly speaking, we don't have a choice but to get better. And there are so many ways you can achieve this through regu regulatory intervention. For example, I'm sure you've heard of the willing buyer, willing seller, I mean, when this enables distribution companies to get power directly from generating companies um, and embed um, into their networks. By that, we will bypass the grid. And many uh, uh, distribution companies are looking at those options right now. They're talking to independent power plants who can actually get power and embed it directly into their network so that way they can serve their customers. Um, the grid system, like I told you, depends on all the power that's supplied to one single carrier, and that can be a drawback. But, as it were, if you have um, embedded power in your network, then it creates 
this balance that I'm talking about. So the way forward, yes. Is there any hope? Yes, there's any there's hope. Uh, well, yes, it's taking a bit too long because this privatization has been there for like six, seven years, and we should have been solving these problems. But we always knew that for a system. All right, Mr. George, you tell me. Been, Yes, well, we must say a very big thank you, very much. We're actually completely out of time. Well, thanks for all the thoughts that you have shared, and indeed, we hope that um, all of these inputs that you have mentioned would actually be taken in co into consideration so that we can have a better power supply going forward. Thank you so much once again, sir. My pleasure. All right. Uh, that's the size of the show for today. Uh, a very big thank you to all of you who have sat back to watch and of course to all of our guests uh, who joined us uh, to share their thoughts on the issues that we have raised today. My name is Justin Akadone. And I am Messi Boko. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and do subscribe to our YouTube channel as at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.